Hyatt's came in rentals, and yes, I did survive that swarm landing in my drawers. All right, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about a bunch of different things. We've got a lot to cover, and we've got a few surprises, I think, in this video. One of my goals from the beginning, before this series really even started, was not to, just to prove that my bees are superior than the package bees. That's really not my goal, and in some circumstances, the package bees might be as good or better. I don't know. This really isn't a super definitive experiment. However, our goal is to show you how to keep them all alive and how to get them all to thrive. There's a big difference between beekeepers that have bees that come through the winter and bees that blow up their boxes coming out of winter because they're so strong. That is our goal. And whether you got packages this year or whether you got nucle nucleus colonies, ah, I can't say anything today. We are going to show you how to use them and, and kind of what to expect. And you're going to see some differences between these colonies. Keep in mind that in our last bit of this series, we took a super procedure cell out of this one and the adhering bees on that frame. And we shook in more bees off of this one down into this box. We're not going in there because when it comes to virgin queens, you do not want to smoke them. You do not want to fool with them because if you just throw it off a little bit inside of that little colony, they will kill them. I've seen this happen several times. I don't know why that is necessarily. Probably something to do with the lack of pheromone on her part, but I have seen several virgins bald while I was trying to see, oh, I wonder if that virgin's hatched out of that cell. And then all of a sudden they're just you hear and the queen piping down there and there's bees all around her ripping her apart. So um, let's not do that today, shall we? All right, but let's get and see how these nukes are doing and see how they compare to our packages at this stage. I think you'll be surprised. By the way, this, this Dayton smoker is like 20 years old. I got it used. It's been run over with the four-wheeler. My other one's a little bit newer. If you're going to get a new smoker, I really like Dayton's. I, I'm not affiliated with anybody, but I really like Dayton smokers. I think they're the Cadillac of uh, bee uh, smokers. And then I really like this tool. I tried this out this year. You can get it from Kelly's Bees. It's got a nice hook right here, and it's got a really thin tip, which is really nice. Now, this is something I haven't done in a while, and that's using inner cover. But it does allow that top lid to come off real nice and easy. Okay. Stick that down. Now, it is drizzling a little bit today, off and on. A lot of people would tell you, don't get in your bees on days like today. They still have to be taken care of one way or the other. That's the same with any other type of farming. We're bee farmers, that's what we are. We just use different words like ap apiary and you know beekeeper, and a lot of times bee havers and stuff like that. All right, nuke's growing a little bit. Bees are very strong. That's not going to hurt them one bit. Now, one thing I have explained in some past videos, I'm not sure if it's been in very recent ones, I don't like to smoke the bees from the entrance. I think that's a terrible idea because when you're doing that and you put a lot of smoke into the colony, you are causing the queen to be affected by the smoke and the nurse bees, which in a colony this size, most of those bees are nurse bees. And they're, nurse bees can't even fly, and I still can't say anything. They are not going to come out here and sting you. They can't fly yet, and especially when we're wanting to make a split or find our queen, if you have so much smoke that she decides to stop her task of laying, you're going to have a fun time finding her. And that's one of the reasons we find queens is not only because we're trained, um, because we've done it so many times, we've got a lot of experience, but our queens just don't go running all over the place. And we're not going to do a really invasive uh, check right here. Now the reason the bees typically are more aggressive this time of, uh, well, in this weather conditions, I can't say anything today, is because most of the forager bees have nothing to do. So they're drawing out this frame really good. I like the look of that. They're not drawing out this other frame. That's why I grabbed them both at the same time to save myself a little time. They're out of feed over here in the feeder. Blow that smoke out of my face. All right, they're drawing this one out really good. 
They got a little bit of interesting something going on right there. The queen has eggs down in there. All that stuff. Now keep in mind how dark these bees are. And then when we get to the packages, how much lighter they are on average. All right, they're drawing this side out really nice as well. She hasn't started putting any eggs in there. We're just gonna go a frame or two over and see how they're doing food-wise. That's the main reason for this inspection. We have our flow going on, but the last few days, they have not been able to fly. Had a lot of thunderstorms come through, and bees eat a lot of food, folks. Wow, lots of larvae down there. That's what we like to see, raising some new reinforcements. There's not a lot of liquid feed up in this colony. You see a little bit up in here. That's not a lot. There's a lot of eggs and stuff over here. You know, there's some food up in here, but they're you know, if, if it dries up the next day and they start foraging really hard, they won't need any feed. I would probably go ahead and give this one around a pint or so, not too much, because things can change really rapidly. We're in the middle of a flow, but you do want to keep them growing. <laughs> Got some emerging brood here. I mean, I don't really need to look anymore at this colony. Oh, there's a queen. Yes, our nukes that we made were from queens that we raised in September of last year. They're still very young as far as how much laying they've done. And I love late fall queens. Absolutely love them. Let's throw these bees back in so they can keep doing what they do best. Ooh, I can smell that bee pheromone coming out of there. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. So let's throw this one back together. Make sure you push the frames all the way back together or you're gonna end up slowly but surely getting fatter combs and then you end up making it harder on yourself and you end up crushing more bees because you don't have any room to maneuver. And you can roll the queen that way too. I mean, sometimes you just can't help it though. I mean, it happens. You can see that they're building burr comb and bridge comb on these frames, but it's just part of it. But you try to help it as much as you can. All right. Oh yeah, we got an inner cover. <laughs> I keep forgetting that thing. All right, we're gonna be a little quicker on the next nuke. I wanna get to those packages. A slick little plastic lid. Probably need to put a brick on that because they're not gluing this down so the wind can lift that up. I'll get a brick on that. Probably get one on this one. All right, so this one's got fewer bees because we shook a frame of bees out to help this little split. Main thing I want to see, how are they doing feed-wise? Different colonies can be a little bit different. They got some food up in here. They're starting to draw this out a little bit. There's a little bit of eggs in there. That's good. This is going to be more of a food frame here, so I really want to see out of one of these frames, because this is probably going to be a food frame, what they're doing in here. Are they backfilling the cells, or do they not have enough around the brood? Now, I can tell that there's food up here, so they look good on top. Yeah, see, here's the, here in lies the problem. Look at all that nectar down in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, they have plenty of food. This one's not gonna get any feed at all. We don't want them backfilling the queen's laying area. If you feed too much, this isn't too much, but we need to take it easy, because if we kept feeding, they'd backfill this so much that they'd, one, start losing population. They go back down slowly but surely because the queen's just not able to find a cell, and they'd eventually swarm. Look good though. They just need a little more room to lay. And remember, we took some bees from them. We took a shake of bees. Those bees would have really helped this colony draw out more of this foundation over here. 
And if they would have drawn that out, that would have taken some of their resources um, the, of the fee that we gave them because they had to burn that up to make that wax. And there have been more bees to consume it. So that's probably why it's a little bit different than the other one. Just those little bitty nuances can make a difference. So we'll give that one about a pint. You know, there's no reason why we can't come back after we feed that one. We can come back and just do a really quick inspection for just a couple minutes, three, four days from now. Light smoke like that. It's really gentle on the bees. All right, let's get to these packages. This is the smallest one. Let's start from the right and work our way to the left. I always go from left to right. Now, one thing about these screen bottom boards down here, keep those um, things closed up. I mean, goodness, we're still getting some cool weather here in May. Even on large honey production colonies, I don't use screen bottom boards, and I don't see any problems with my bees being able to ventilate the colony. A healthy colony has a lot of bee power, and they are extremely good at ventilating colonies. Now, some people want to give them that extra ventilation, and that is fine, but I don't find it necessary. But I just like how this little tool just slides right underneath there. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to see. I bet you didn't expect that. This package is really growing good. Everyone's going to tell you local this, local that, and yes, local is a little bit better, but I've had some local stuff that was absolutely abysmal. Whether it was swarms or purchasing nukes in the past, you need to get your experience to the point where you can tell what's going on by the combs. That's one of the reasons I like packages is because at least you're getting what they tell you that you're getting. You're getting a queen, you're getting three pounds of clean bees. With nucleus colonies, when I've purchased them in the past, which has been too often um, years ago when I'd purchased them over and over again trying to keep them alive, you get some that have all kinds of virus problems in the brood, and oh my goodness, it was just a big problem. Let me move this mic down. My valve doesn't hit it. Alrighty, so same song, second verse. Let's see how much brood they have and kind of what stage. Get this uh, frame over here out of the way. Started gluing this stuff down pretty good. There we go. Do oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling, Laurel Lee. For you Auburn fans who just love my Alabama hat, I apologize in advance. I'm sure the t my Tennessee fans, uh, all those Tennessee fans, just absolutely love this hat too. I can't wait for college football. All right, so we got a little bit of nectar or, or sugar syrup over here. They're starting to draw that out, looks pretty good. So this is on the sixth frame and it looks drawn out completely. Oop. This one feels like it's got some weight to it. Oh yeah, all right. So we got all kinds of different age larvae down in there. We got eggs on the edges. That's really good. They're drawing this frame out. They're out of feed. I give them just a little bit more. Keep them drawing. But don't give them too much. Not here in Tennessee. Now, if you're in northern areas where you don't have any flow going on and you have bees at this stage, you need to keep feeding them. Just keep an eye on it. You know, that's, that's all there is to it. Keep your bees. Don't have your bees. Just like anything else. People think you can just wind up some bees in a box and walk away. It's no different. Oh, there's the queen. Down there in that corner. It's no different from having horses or raising special dogs that can help blind people or, or help you herd sheep or whatever. You have to put a little bit of work into it. Look at those beautiful, pearly white, healthy larvae. This is the sign of a queen that's doing good. Man, I got another bee in my bonnet. And uh, also one that's been mated properly. We need to mark this queen. That way if we know, we know, we'll know if she gets superseded. Man, I can't say anything today. Whoops, excuse me, bee. All right, let me get this veil off real quick because I've got one in here keeping me company. All right, let's get this marker out. This year's color is green.
All right, now what we're going to do, we have to keep her away from the rest of the bees for a while or she is going to, or they are going to wipe all of our paint off of her very quickly. I thought I had a queen cage in my pocket. Ah, this pocket. All right, so we need this queen cage. This is one of the little plastic ones that I keep around for this purpose. A little bit of wax to plug her in there with. And we just got to catch her. We're going to try to take our time and get a Good little picture of her. All right. She's right there eating a little bit of honey. Grab her by the wings. And it gets difficult when another bee gets in there with you. Get out of here. All right. Now, one thing, when they're fat and heavy like this, they don't do a lot of flying. They can't fly very far because they're so full of eggs. It's a good idea, however, to always have something to catch them in. Whoop, there was another bee in my bonnet. Um, and keep them in here. That way, if they get out of your grasp, you can uh, keep them from getting down in there. Let me tell you, drop one in the grass. They are really hard to find again. All right. Now, I like to grab them with my right hand because I have more muscle control. All right. Now, we are going to, you see that right there? That's her thorax. That's a hard piece of exoskeleton. We're just going to dab that with a little bit of a mark. If I can get it between my fat thumbs. All right, that's really good right there. Now let's get her in the cage. All right, come on, get in there. Thank you. All right. Now we are going to move on to the next colony and let this one dry. And now she's going to be really easy to find in the future. All right. Let's put all these frames back together. But this colony looks really good. So let's get rid of that right there. But their drawing comb's good. They've got all this young stuff. You know what? Let's pull one more out, shall we? I just want to see what kind of old stuff they have. They should be ha having a lot of emerging stuff right now. They've, they've ob obviously been growing. Oh, yeah, that's been hatching out. Well, you know, they got a little bit of sugar syrup or nectar down in there. Fuzzy little bees right there. Been hatching out. There's one hatching out right down there. Oh yeah. Let's just throw this hive back together and we're going to give them back their queen. Poor guys. Girls. Not a whole lot of guys in these colonies right now. They don't need drones and they know that so they don't raise a lot. Once they get about, mm, about eight frames out, they really start wanting the urge to start making some drones. Bees want to reproduce. And sometimes they do it um, so aggressively, they'll, uh, they'll swarm out of your colonies entirely. And bees don't always do what's wise because they, they don't have the gift of intelligent thought. They just do what's based off of their natural tendency for their genetics will allow and stimuli and all that stuff. And man, I just am stumbling all over myself today. All right, well, thank you, Laurel. So we're going to let that paint dry really good right there. Let's bust through these. Now I'm going to do this one at the speed I normally would inspect a colony like this. So I ain't going to do as much talking. If I can get this frame out of here. Well, they've tied that comb or something together a little bit. Alright, so they're drawing that one out pretty... They're starting it good. That's important good to make sure that they are they are starting it good and that way you can correct if they, you need to. That is just full of eggs. That's really good. I mean pretty much right there in these two frames I've seen what, all I need to see. They're not back filling with food. They are laying eggs like crazy. 
they've obviously been growing. The colony is on the way up. Qu eggs are three and a half days from start to finish. So if you're seeing eggs, there was a queen laying within a three and a half day period. All right. That's all I needed to see. There's some weight to that. I'm not going to give this one any feed. You know, honestly, none of these colonies have to have feed. I'd like to give them a little bit to keep them drawing. But it's supposed to get sunny the next few days. So if you do give a colony like these any feed, make sure it's very little. So you don't backfill that brood nest because you got to think about how much they might possibly bring in. All right. And, excuse me. See how well those lids hold up over time. All right, what do we got here? Ah, eh, that looks, looks like they're getting a little creative down in there. Eh, I hate it when they do that. All right, first thing we want to do with a frame like this is make sure the queen is not on here. We don't want to crush her in the process of scraping. And what I really like to do is what I've shown you before. Scoot this over. All right. And try not to go all the way down because you don't want to end up scraping the wax off down below. And sometimes they'll have already done it for you. But usually if you catch it early enough, they won't have peeled that wax off. So they'll just start it afresh. Now keep in mind, if you throw wax foundation or plastic foundation, if the bees have no surplus sugar or su surplus nectar, which is just sugar in a different form basically, they are just going to get bored and they're going to pick off the wax off of the black foundation with beeswax they'll pick holes in it because they can go all the way through it so just keep in mind only put this stuff and have it available to them when they're drawing otherwise you're potentially ruining your wax foundation and you'll probably have to recoat your plastic foundation with new beeswax that's one of the reasons plastic is nice is because you can recoat it all right yep there's one hatching out right there Oh yeah, there it goes. And one of its first goals is to get out of that cell and get to some honey or some nectar and suck that up. And then it's gonna return back to the same area and start cleaning out cells. That's pretty much their first job. Awesome. It's just amazing if you take the time to just to think on how much work they do each Little larvae takes hundreds of feeding visits each, like multiple times hundreds of visits. Just the, the bee power that it takes, and that's why having good bee density on the, the frames is so important. And what did I do with that other comb? Foundation. I now have another one in there. I'm not sure I ever got it back around three or four weeks ago putting that one in. Alrighty. Well, we are going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching our videos. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Let's throw this queen in real quick. Should be plenty dry at this point. Oh, yeah. And just walk her out. There you go. And that's all there is to that. All right. Thanks for watching our videos. Any comments or questions, leave them below.